I'd like to talk about uh, some ways to uh, extend Paymail to improve things like um, authenticity. Uh, so in the last video, I talked about basically the, the importance of uh, basically understanding the concept that users and keys aren't the same thing and why it's important to actually have both the name, which is the Paymail, and the public key. And a very related idea to all this is uh, when, you, when you look at the way that we have Paymail working right now, um, you should realize that Paymail is designed to be extensible, um, that when I say things like we can solve every single identity problem with Paymail, um, what I'm saying is in my head I have a solution to every identity problem with Paymail that involves extending Paymail in a number of different ways. It does not mean that the current uh, spec or implementation actually contain everything. So what I'm trying to do in this series of videos, uh, which is a bit of an informal uh, sort of sort of spur of the moment series here, is just based on the fact that I'm talking with people and, and gradually figuring out what it is that they do and don't understand about PayMail. What I'm trying to do is both explain why it is the way it is, um, why I think that uh, it is uh, basically the best possible solution to all these problems, and ultimately how we can solve every single identity problem using PayMail. Um, I'm not pitching PayMail just because, I'm pitching it because I want to make sure that Bitcoin is successful and I know that we need a naming system that actually works uh, in order to solve everything related to identity and that's exactly what we've done with PayMail. So anyway, okay, so to bring this back to this subject, okay, so what I want to talk about in today's video is basically uh, how and why to put PayMail fully on chain. So one of the problems we have right now is um, if you do something like get an address from someone. So what you do is, you know, PayMail A wants to send to PayMail B. See, I'll, I'll, I'll use myself and, uh, I don't know, let's use, uh, I like to use Lorian as an example. So let's suppose Ryan at moneybutton.com is paying Lorian at centpy.com. And the way this works is when I swipe money button inside of money button, so in other words, I'm making a payment from within the first wallet, which is money button, to centpy, uh, as soon as they finish, you know, adding and you know, rolling out support for all these things. Um, what will happen is my wallet will actually query to get an address from uh, Centipi. At least this is how it works right now. Um, you know, one of the things that we announced at, at, at uh, 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 the CoinGate conference in Seoul is the, is the idea that after you get an address, what you're going to do is then actually deliver the transaction peer to peer. We're not currently doing that yet. We haven't launched that yet, but we are working with a number of uh, different wallets to actually uh, finish this because we have to actually get all the wallets actually agree in a, in a very detailed way about how this works. But in any case, I get the address from Centipi. Now, the, the problem is that we have very little authenticity that this is actually the accurate, correct address for Lorian at centb.com. So how do we know that Lorian, that, that it actually is Lorian's key? Right now we have a lot of trust for uh, the uh, sort of the, the, the service provider, right? So you're, you're relying on whoever it is that's running the server. Now in theory, it could be the Lorian himself. Uh, of course, in this case, one of the, Lorian is one of the founders, but imagine it wasn't a founder and that it's just a user. Uh, and they're not running it themselves. You're really, uh, you, you have a lot of trust in that service provider. So what if either the trust is violated because they're bad or they're just hacked or something like this? It would be good to have greater authenticity over the, the keys. And so this is something we can actually do with the blockchain. Uh, so one of the things we can do is to actually start putting these uh, messages on chain. If you start putting stuff like this on, thing, uh, on chain, you can have much greater authenticity. So the way this would work would be something like, okay, when I actually get an address from, uh, uh, you know, Centby, or when Money Button gets an address from Centby, what if, I could, I'll give you two examples. These are not currently implemented in PayMail, but the point is that these are ways we can extend PayMail to do this. So what if what we do is we, we get a signed message from Centby uh, that actually says, um, you know, we are, you know, this is Lorian's address. It's sort of happening right now with HTTPS, but HTTPS is not actually logged on chain. What if we logged that response? So we could have a proof that the, uh, for, as far as sort of, if we're willing to trust Centby, we could have proof that, uh, you know, Centby assures us that this actually is Lorian's key, okay? If this was logged on chain, we could have records of things like, okay, um, I know that uh, CentB's key is such and such and Lorian's key is such and such according to these logs. So you could authenticate stuff that way. If you then have something like, you know, query the same, uh, you know, ad or sorry, you query uh, Lorian's key in the future, 
you could then compare that against prior logs and know whether anything had changed. This is an example of a way that you can improve authenticity. Um, I'll give you another example. Um, what if Lorian himself signed his own key? Um, so Lorian could then sign with his paymail what his key is. Again, this goes on chain, and the on chain part is important because then you have a, a record. No one can then change stuff after the fact on chain. So then you query the blockchain itself to actually see whether Lorian himself had previously uh, you know, uh, uh, provided this key. So a way to do that would be something like when you get the address, you are then also given proof on chain. You're given like a link to say a transaction ID which has the proof uh, that it's on chain. Neither of these approaches actually guarantee the impossibility of say, uh, you know, re retrieving a, a bad key. What it does is if something goes wrong, uh, you have logs and you also have the ability to do things like uh, make it basically very unlikely that something would go wrong by actually querying the logs. So I hope these ideas are clear. Um, I, I want to go a little bit further and say, uh, you know, we can we can do all sorts of things uh, on top of this. I mean, this is completely consistent with things like web of trust, for example. So what if, okay, you don't, you can't simply trust the logs because what if the whole thing is fake going all the way back to the beginning? But what if you have a friend who is friends with Lorian? And what you do is, uh, using a web of trust on chain, your friend has a signed message on chain, uh, you know, proving Lorian's key is such and such or whatever it is. Um, from a user's perspective, the way this would work is basically uh, you would simply pay Lorian. The software behind the scenes would actually be doing this validation. So it would know something like, okay, you have a friend in your contact list who is also in turn friends with Lorian, and we can see the chain of trust there going to Lorian that this is Lorian's key. So you know, using the web of trust on chain and then on chain PayMail messages, we can validate all this stuff. Um, so a web of trust is a, is a sort of a third idea that we can add into this uh, to improve authenticity. Once again, it doesn't actually guarantee anything. It's not about perfect security. It's about having a level of security that is sufficiently high that it is greater than uh, the cost of breaking the security. Okay, so by improving authenticity, not ever making it perfect, but improving it, uh, we basically make it such that the cost of violating all this stuff gets higher and higher and higher and higher and higher and so on. So in order to implement, you know, these things, we, we have, uh, you know, uh, we need to do things like we, we basically need to extend PayMail so that we actually have a protocol for what it looks like when a uh, PayMail provider, uh, which could be a person, but it's probably a third party, assigns something and puts it on chain. What does that look like? What do the logs look like? What does it look like when a user uh, signs something themselves and puts those logs on chain? What does, it, what does a web of trust protocol look like? That is a third protocol. And this would probably involve several additional protocols. It would involve things like what it looks like when you actually query the PayMail, because we extend the, the sort of the PayMail HTTPS protocol, as well as things like data structures and stuff like that on chain. This is why we've done a bunch of basic primitive stuff so far. So if, for people that are uh, following and, and getting this stuff, what we've done with PayMail is to create basic protocol infrastructure that is designed to be built upon to gradually solve every single one of these problems in an iterative way. So PayMail itself is extensible. You can add more query things to it and be able to query more information. Um, inside Money Button itself, we also very specifically implemented things like signatures and encryption. First, now we have a way to start doing things like signing something on chain. The user can sign something, put it on chain. We've got basic protocol stuff implemented, ready to start taking it to the next level to do things like what does it look like when you sign a web of trust message and so on and things like this. Um, so the basic infrastructure is there. I want to sort of conclude with one final um, um, like end game for PayMail. Again, when you actually understand what I'm saying, we have not designed every single extension to protocol to PayMail yet. What we've done is to envision that here is basically the types of extensions that we need to create to completely solve the, the, the identity problem. And you know, we need to agree about what those protocols are in a bite for bite way, uh, as well as then actually implement them. But it, it's very straightforward. We can solve every problem related to identity building on this. Okay, so the final thing is actually DNS itself. Um, so first of all, I, I think you know, DNS is, I, I don't think DNS actually has an issue. I mean, I, I think DNS actually as itself is fine. DNS is one of those things where I personally don't actually think that we need to rush to put it on chain. I think the way that DNS will end up on chain is actually just inevitable. Like the, the way it will happen is basically, there's no reason to try. What will happen is eventually we're going to realize that it's literally cheaper and easier to put even DNS itself on chain, and that's when we're going to do it. There's no reason to rush and do this. Um, in any case, um, 
I want to explain sort of roughly how this would would look because even DNS itself can go on chain. And when you look at this and you look at my previous videos on, on things like even putting TCP and you know, replacing you know, TCP with payment channels and stuff like this, or you can replace HTTPS with, uh, uh, with on-chain messages too, but I'll leave that as a thought experiment. But let's go all the way to DNS and say we want the names themselves on chain. Because if the names themselves are on chain and everything else is on chain, well then everything's on chain. We've com fully moved uh, uh, DNS on chain because uh, you know this will improve authenticity. So with DNS itself, um, you know we have things like uh, okay. So first of all, let's just let's just consider roughly speaking, the way DNS works is you you basically have a trusted entity, which uh, to my knowledge is either it was it was it's either ICANN or it's IANA. It's one of those organizations that is the central uh, sort of uh, uh, authority. Uh, that actually uh, sort of sort of gives out these these names. Okay, so they're like, at the end of the day, you're, you're trusting IANA on the internet. DNS is actually a protocol that you can run in a local area network and all this stuff. But in any case, if it's on the internet, uh, you have a central naming uh, uh, system and hierarchy that that you know you, that you rely on. So there's sort of ICANN and or IANA at the middle there, and then you have things like these domain name providers. Uh, that provide services for uh, you know uh, purchasing and and uh, or I should perhaps I should say renting these domain names from the service. Um, so in any case, um, what you want to is basically uh, put the central keys that ICANN and or IANA uses for their central registry on chain. Okay, and now you've got a, a log of these things, so that if something ever changes or whatever, you can always go back to the beginning and find where their original, uh, you know, uh, sort of signed messages are on chain, just like you build in things like, uh, you know, uh, PKI into web browsers and stuff like this. You just build in the transaction IDs into the software where the original ones were, going all the way back to the beginning. You can then do things like they will then sign messages that allocate, you know, that give access to domain name providers and things like this and put that stuff on chain. So now you've got a record of that stuff too. So now you can go to your domain name provider and say, and like track everything back to the beginning of you know when DNS first signed stuff on chain, and you can go all the way down to the domain names themselves, and then down to the paymails as well. So the domain name provider then signs something over to the uh, uh, to the uh, you know to the to the to, to the owner of the domain name. So in this case, it could be something like Money Button and and Incent B. Uh, and then you would be able to see something like, okay, so this domain name provider uh, provided, you know, signs off on this one and so on. Uh, so then you've got, you can go all the way down to the record of money button and sent me, and then from there to the individual users. Okay, so from there you, you then have another, uh, a final sort of branch in this hierarchy down to the individual users and see the signatures authenticated on chain the entire way. If somebody ever gets hacked or something like this, you, you now have a record. You have a record of what actually happened. So you can compare your new information to the record that you you already know is the authentic record uh you know given the fact that it's built into the software that that you are running um okay so so if you understand what i'm saying here we have in paymail we have a basic uh, extensible protocol that does naming and querying um we have not yet designed every extension and implemented every extension yet but what we can do is extend paymail and implement it in a manner agreeable to people such that we can eventually solve every single problem related to identity uh, and the end game for paymail is actually to put literally everything on chain so even paymail itself although it's currently like halfway off chain um, eventually paymail itself i don't know how long this will take i mean the, we should only do it in a manner that's like whatever is the practical you know order to do all this stuff but in any case uh all of paymail will eventually end up completely entirely on chain and I think this system will be extremely agreeable to everyone. I, I think the only people that won't like that idea, you'll have, you'll have some extremists that don't like the idea that DNS itself uh, is centralized because there is actually an organization at the middle of it that you do have to actually ultimately trust this organization. I believe the level of trust is extremely low, especially after we start putting all this stuff on chain. It'll be incredibly difficult for them to ever change. Uh, and furthermore, personally, at an ideological level, I actually don't personally care that there is an organization. I think it's it's effect, it's just a nonprofit organization that's providing a service. Sometimes a nonprofit organization is just a, a perfectly valid way to solve a problem. There are other naming solutions we can do in the future. So if if whatever there's any reason why we don't want to use DNS in the future, when all this stuff happens and we're putting all of this stuff on chain, uh, then we can uh, we append to DNS additional naming protocols so that we can basically substitute. I don't think that's very realistic just because that would require that every single business that currently uses a DNS would have to change their name to use the naming system. I think it makes way more sense that we actually use DNS as, as a centralized hierarchy of names forever. Uh, 
I think that's realistic, and I think that's practical, and I think that's probably what's going to happen. Um, but if there is a problem, there are alternatives. It's just going to require that people change their name, which is going to be a giant, you know, PITA. It's going to be something where no one's going to want to do something like that. So it'd be like a really giant deal if we ever have to do that. By not changing our names, it means companies like Google, Microsoft, and your business can keep the same domain name as their name, uh, you know, sort of forever. Uh, so anyway, I think that's the best, uh, you know, most realistic and most practical option. Okay, so that's it. That's in a nutshell. That's how we're going to, over time, be able to put, uh, you know, how and why we're going to put uh, PayMail fully on chain. We're going to do it in an order that actually makes sense and it's going to be practical the entire way and we would never do it any way other than that. Um, all right, uh, we're going to continue this video series as I continue to talk with people about all this stuff. You know, I'm spending more time talking about PayMail than I am about Money Button just because, um, you know, like I, I basically detected that people don't fully understand it. So I'm going to continue to create content about all this stuff. Uh, to make sure that people understand what we're doing and why. And I'm all ears if there are better ways to solve all these problems, but if I don't hear better ways, we're going to keep moving forward at full speed, uh, you know, designing these protocols and implementing everything. Okay, that's all I have to say. Thank you for listening.